Hello and welcome back to the Xamarin Forms tutorial where we work on a time tracker app. I'm Patrick and this is the Let's Create series. Before we start today's episode I want to make a couple announcements. First a special thank you to everybody that's subscribed to the channel right now. It really helps me out. If you're watching right now and you're not subscribed to the channel please consider subscribing as it really is the best way to support the channel. I also want to take a quick moment to call out the new Let's Create series developer community. This was an idea by one of the viewers to make a group where we could all kind of jump in and make posts to either help each other out through the series or post suggestions about future videos. So if you're not a part of the community yet, please consider joining. There will be a link in the description and I look forward to seeing you in the group. With those announcements out of the way, let's jump into today's video. In today's video, we're going to be hooking up the Android side of our project to the Firebase Firestore project. So we'll create the Firestore database in the Firebase console. We'll hook up the Android side and we'll prepare for the iOS side in the next episode. So let's get into it. To add Cloud Firestore to our project, the first thing we want to do is head over to the Firebase console, go to database and we'll click create database. This will give us some options for starting in production mode or test mode. Test mode lets anybody read and write and we don't really want that. So we'll leave it in start in production mode and we'll write some rules. So we can click next. Then it'll ask for a location and we cannot change this later. So pick a location that works for you and then we'll click done. And once Firebase finishes setting up your database, you should be at this screen. And so we'll want to add some collections to our database and one collection we'll want is a user's collection. So we'll head over to authentication to grab the user UID of our test user. So let's go ahead and copy this user UID. Then we'll head back over to the database and we'll click start collection. And now we'll add the user's collection and we can click next. And then it's gonna want a document ID. And so each user ID can stay consistent with the authentication user UID. So we'll just paste that in here. And then we can just add some placeholder fields for now. So something like first name and last name. And then we can click save and that'll give us our first document in the collection. With the document ID set to the user's UID, we can retrieve this document in our application. So now we'll head over to rules and we'll make a rule so that only the logged in user can access their own user information. So we'll leave the default rule in place that just disallows all re read and write operations. And then we'll add a new match for the user's collection and it'll take in a user ID, which is the document ID. And then we can allow read and write if the request.auth does not equal null and request.auth.uid is equal to the user ID. And then we can test this by opening the playground and we'll just use a fake path to a, our user's collection, but a fake ID and we'll run it and this will not allow the read. But when we simulate an authentication and we set the user's UID to something like 111, which matches the document ID and run it, we get an allow. So this read is allowed. And then if we just stay logged in, but let's say with a different user and run, it should also disallow. So this is perfect. This rule runs fine. So we can publish this rule. And before we leave, we should add a comment to this rule that kind of explains what it does. And so basically this rule allows content owners to read and write their own user profile. And then we can publish with that comment and we can head back over to our project. So back in our project, before we add Firebase Firestore to our Android project, let's go ahead and remove auth and analytics, and then we'll come back and add them in their latest versions. With those packages removed, we'll go ahead and click manage NuGet packages and then we'll search for xamarin.firebase.analytics and we'll go ahead and add the latest version. We'll do the same thing for auth, so xamarin.firebase.auth. We'll add the latest version here and then we'll do it one more time and this time we're looking for xamarin.firebase.firestore. Once that package pops up, we can add its latest version as well, so add package. And with all of our packages updated, we can collapse the packages folder. Then we'll head over to the shared project. We'll open services, account, and we'll open I account service. So we want the account service to also access the user's profile so we can make a task. It's going to return a model that we'll create in a moment. And this model will be called something like authenticated user. We can call this method get user async. 
and then we'll make that model. So let's right click models, add a new class. We'll call it authenticated user again. We can get rid of the constructor and we want to be able to access the user's UID. So we can just say prop tab tab string and this will be just ID is fine. We also want the first name and last name that we have in our Firestore collection. And so for now, our authenticated user model will store the ID, the first name, and the last name. So we can save and close this model. And then we can quick fix over here to import the model's namespace. And now we have our method declaration for getting the user's profile. So we'll want to open the mock account service, use a quick fix on I account service just to bring in that method and we'll leave it not implemented for now. And we'll just save and then we'll close the mock service. And then we'll head over to the Android project, open services and account service, and we'll do the same. So we'll use a quick fix, implement interface, and now we have this method down here for getting the user async. And so now we'll make the same sort of task completion source, but instead of a Boolean, we'll return a authenticated user. So let's say var TCS equals new task completion source. And this one will be an authenticated user. And then we can go ahead and return tcs.task. And between here, we're going to use Firebase Firestore. So we can say Firebase Firestore, use a quick fix to bring in the namespace for Firestore. And we can say instance, and then we can use dot collection. And we know our collections name is users. So we can put that in here. Then we can access the document directly. And we, and we have the users user ID from Firebase auth. So we can use Firebase auth dot instance dot current user dot UID. So now that returns a document reference and you can just call get on the document reference and that'll return an Android task. So then we need to add an on complete listener. So add on complete listener and we don't have that yet. So we'll create it, but for now we'll just say new on complete listener and then we'll pass in the TCS so that it can handle setting the result. And now we need to make this on complete listener. So let's make a new folder in our Android project and we can call this one service listeners. In our service listeners folder, let's add a new class and we'll call this one on complete listener. And this on complete listener should implement the I on complete listener. And then a quick fix will let us bring in the android.gms.tasks namespace. And then it'll want us to implement the interface. But if we just implement the interface now, it'll bring in a whole bunch of things that are required for a, a Java object. So let's undo that. And so instead, let's also extend from java.lang.object, and that should take care of all of those. And now when we do a quick fix, it'll only bring in the one method that we need. And so the first thing we can do is check to see if the task is successful. So if task dot is successful, then we can process the document. Otherwise, something went wrong. And so when instantiating the, our new uncomplete listener, we're passing in a TCS. So let's make it so we can accept that task completion source. So we'll bring it into the constructor. This will also take in an authenticated user. We can use a quick fix to bring in tasks and we can use another quick fix to bring in the models. And then we'll just call this one TCS and then we'll catch this locally. So use an underscore TCS equals TCS, a quick fix to generate the private member. Now with that done, we're going to have an issue because we're using both system threading tasks as well as Android GMS tasks. And so now this is ambiguous. And so we can use a quick fix to fully qualify the task. And this one is an android.gms.tasks.task. And now if something went wrong, we can just try to set the result on the task completion source to a default authenticated user. But if the task is successful, we can process the document. So we'll want to get the result of the task. So we'll say var result equals task.result. And then we can check to see if the result is a document snapshot from Firebase. So we can say if result is document snapshot and then a quick fix to bring in firebase.firestore and we can just call this doc is fine then we can get the data from the document set it to a new authenticated user and set that as the task completion source result so we can just say var user equals new authenticated user we can set the users.id to the document.id and then we can set the user.first name equals document.getString, and this will take in first name as the field. Then we can do the same for last name. So our first draft of the uncomplete listener is okay, so we can head back to the account service, and we can use a quick fix to implement the namespace that we just created. So we can save all, 
and we can test the app to make sure our user is being retrieved properly. So in order to test this, we need to make a call to get user async. So we'll head over to page models. We'll open time clock page model. Time clock page model is already using the account service. It comes in the constructor. So in the initialize async method, we can just make a test call real quick. So we can just say var user equals await account service dot get user async. And then we can just check to see if user does not equal null. And we can put a breakpoint there on user just to, just to make sure that user gets retrieved and we get its data. So let's go ahead and run the app. And now our app is running. If you got some compilation errors or build errors after removing those Firebase packages and then re-adding them, go ahead and clean your project and rebuild the Android project. But from here, we can click sign in with the email. We can use our test user that we put into the Firebase authentication and click log in. We'll hit our breakpoint and see the user is null. Uh, this was a mistake. So let's head back to the oncomplete listener and let's make sure we actually set the result on the task completion source after we have filled in the user. So once we have populated the new authenticated user, let's go ahead and try to set the result on the task completion source. So this will be user and then we'll return. If we didn't get this far, whether it be because the result is not a document snapshot or if the task wasn't successful, then it'll just set the result as null. So now we can run the app again. We'll go ahead and log in with our test user again. And this time we should see that the authenticated user is not null and it contains the values from the Firebase Firestore database. So we're successfully hooked into Firebase Firestore on Android. And now we'll get hooked up in iOS and then we'll start abstracting some of this conversion logic so that it can be reused across platforms. So let's go ahead and stop our app. We'll get rid of just this call in the time clock page model. So we don't need to call the get user info and we don't need to check if user is, is null. That was just for testing. So we can get rid of that and save. And then we can start working on the iOS project. I think that's a good stopping point for today's video. If you like the video, feel free to give it a like and subscribe to the channel. If you have any questions, leave them down below in the comments section. Thank you for watching the Xamarin Forms tutorial. I'm Patrick, and this is the Let's Create series.